Oh, no, 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 you're, you guys need it's totally around. okay. Oh, yeah. That's totally okay. <laughs> no problem. So this place has been a restaurant for a long time, right? Yeah. I mean, this wasn't I, like... I would say maybe probably 30, 40, 50 years. Wow. So was it... It wasn't Alexander's before. No. It was Bigger Dune um, for a little bit. And then they were like about a year, year and a half. And then it was Z's in the lake. And then before that, that's what I lost. <laughs> <laughs> it used to be... I, back in the day, it was a bunch of mom and pop pizza shops. Um, I was an ice cream place at one point back in the 60s. Oh, so this was an ice cream shop? I think so. Oh, that's... So, now, did you guys have to really renovate it a lot, or...? No, when they, so when they, they bought it from uh, Z's on the Lake, uh, the marina bought it, he sold it to the marina, they used it for storage, and then Finley Lake Land Management technically owned the building and the land. Okay. And it was, a, it was like 37 people in the community, or that have connections to the community, that crowdfunded money. Oh, you're kidding. Bought it back from them, completely gutted it, like dirt floors gutted it, and then did this for the people that were before us. Right. And they didn't work out, so we walked into this. Dude, that's crazy. I know. So, so Larry Gross, the owner of the candle company, he kind of like headed it. Oh, he did? Yeah. Um, and he said he could have got more than they needed. People would just start handing him money, like handing him checks, because they wanted, they wanted a place to go to. They wanted... You know, right. when their friends came in, hey, come down to this place. Like, it's our place. Yeah. You know, not so much, like, because they have money into it, but because they've been real good about that, too. Like, they don't really mess with, like, you know, he told them, hey, you're land and building owners. You're not restaurant owners. Right. You know, so, uh, but they wanted their place to go to and take all their friends and come in and right. have us know them and then know us. And so that's that, how it worked. This has that feel to it. Yeah. You know, so the intention behind this, the intentionality, uh, really, for them, became more important than, you know, they just needed somebody in here to run the place. Right, exactly. And it was you. Right. <laughs> so, yeah. uh, now, who's your partner? Uh, his name's Chris Hess. He's actually in Guantanamo Bay right now on uh, deployment. Oh, jeepers. So, uh, so, he's on a beach. It's not like he's, you know, <laughs> he'll, he'll tell you that, too. He doesn't like to take credit for something he doesn't do. And it's, you know. <laughs> he's hanging out. Yeah, he's just he's hanging out. He was in Afghanistan for a little bit when he was younger. And then like three or four years ago, he was in Guantanamo and then he just went back. He should be hopefully back next month, like by Christmas. So Did you guys grow up together? Uh, no, actually, the whole, this whole story is nuts. Uh, so I actually knew his brother. Uh, I met his brother in my senior year of high school. Uh, he was a year below me. And then I knew of him, but really didn't, you know, hang out with them. And then probably a couple Weeks or so before this thing took off, um, right. I had posted something on Facebook about wanting to go to the solar eclipse, uh, and him and his sister were already going, so he's like, hey, you just want to join us? Um, and that was like the first time I hung out with him. And then, like, really? Three months later, we opened this place. Holy crap. So, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, it's nuts. You know what? I, uh, so I do this uh, pretty much every day, and what I see in all businesses, in the best businesses, is when life, uh, the synchronicity and the synergy of life just kind of opens up for you. Yeah. You know, and that's what happened to you. Right. Right? You're like, right. what is going on? Because uh, you ended up uh, 90 days later yeah. in this restaurant. Right. <laughs> From like, where? For, yeah, yeah, like, what are we? I was, I was managing a firehouse subs in Erie. Wow. Um, and he works for GE. Has the menu changed at all since you? Yeah, since we opened, we kind of rotated it um, last summer. We came out with a, like a summer menu. Um, just took away some stuff that didn't work, right. um, whether it was for like logistical reasons or just because it didn't sell. Sure. Um, added some new stuff. Added some wraps. You know, people love wraps. That's a new. Uh, yep. That's a new thing. But for the majority, it's been we kind of have that. We kind of have that upper end, um, that high scale stuff that people like the salmon, the strip steak, mm. that. We also have the families of six or seven that come in and want right. pizza and wings or a grilled cheese sandwich. Yep. Um, so we've kind of had dinner specials that we'll run every night starting at four um, to kind of feature some of our talent in the kitchen, kind of feature some of the, the higher end things um, that people would want in that respect. But we also have your standard, you know, Philly cheese steak or we call it mm. the Finley cheese steak. Um, and, you know, grilled cheese sandwiches, pizza, wings. Um, our mac and cheese has won an award. Really? Uh, we've run a couple um, 
competition is near. Haven't we, I got a first year? We got a second and a third. Dude, but, but you know, uh, it's a hard thing to make well. Yeah. And it's really deceiving. Right. To, and we, to be consistent with it, it's it's super hard, especially with the changeover and the turnover that we have. So, um, yeah, we got, we did a quesadilla as like a kind of a special appetizer one mm -hmm. week, and it sold like crazy. So now that's on our menu. So we kind of just rotate the menu according to what you know people want and what what sells. It's not like we have to. I'm not biased towards anything. I'm not saying because right. I like something that it, it, I want this on my menu. It's, you know, we'll, we'll tinker around with stuff and kind of rotate every th things like every eight to 10 months, whether it's just one or two items, just, you know, sure. changing the color of the menu or just doing something different to say, hey, you know, we're always learning, always rotating, always listening to the customers. Tell me about Twin Docs. Uh, so Twin Docs came about um, from Larry Gross and the Candle Company. Uh, it was going into our first summer. Uh, as it wasn't hectic enough, he came to me and asked if. Uh, Dude, right? You can't wait right. until right. Just yeah. give me what? Just give me a breath. Right. <laughs> right. Um, but that's the way if, things. Uh, it used to be a uh, little, little town market, little Finley Lake market. Was it a, a fa small family that had owned it for a long time? Yeah, or? it was. Like, yeah, yeah, they've owned it for a long time. It was like little mom and pop market things. You, you know, stuff you would typically see in a small town. Your essentials, your bread, your eggs, your milk, some band aids. You know, that stuff like that. Um, and that, uh, unfortunately, was closing, and Larry wanted to keep another, he didn't want another place in Finley to close. Um, so he came to me with the idea of, of teaming up, and, you know, we kind of do the restaurant food aspect of it, and they'll handle, you know, their type of uh, demographic and their products. And, right. And you know, I said yes, not knowing that one wasn't going to be out enough. And I was actually very, very hesitant on it. They came well, yeah. with his uh, business partner and, he said, are we doing this or not? <laughs> I was like, I, I, I mean. You don't even have the time you know, to think, He's like, right? you know, he was, you know, very honest. Like, if you don't, like, I, you know, somebody else will. Yeah. And, I'm, you and know, you're the, like, The business not? in me and was like, all right, well, I guess two places will be here. It's just a matter of getting started. It's not, you know, it's right. not a huge store. So no. it's not like it needs the upkeep. But, uh, you know, we were right. going into our first summer to understaffed and trying to open up another place, but it doesn't get much more stressful. No. <laughs> like the, right. this is one of the most stressful businesses that you can have. Yeah. Period. Yeah. It doesn't matter if you're just starting. You've been around for 15 years. But the beautiful thing about this is you got a bead on it because you can see it right yeah. through your. Yeah. So it's a five minute walk right. really if you ever need to get there. Right. Right. Uh, and then your partners with Larry, so it's not like you shouldered it. Right. Right. Now, yeah. so you and your partner are partners with Larry, or is it you yeah. and oh, so yeah. all three of you? Yeah. So are yeah, Alexander is the corporation partner with the candle company and um it's they they did they took a lot of the stress away to be honest with you they redid it uh they painted outside they kind of set up the store um how they wanted to set up the store which was fine with me at the time <laughs> is that mural new oh uh, yeah that, that was put in over the summer i think two or three months ago oh um there yeah you so we got uh they got larry headed that as well we've got a grant um, from the state, right. uh, and there's a mural on that, and there's a mural on the side of the fire hall that kind of yes, corpuses. Yeah, yeah. No, that was done like, all at the same time. Uh, that went in. I, that went in. I think in the spring, and then that came. The one on Twin Docks came a couple months later. So same artist. Now I, I think that's uh, that just adds a mystique to the area, and like you said, it just gets you to remember Finney Lake yep. and and gets you that that image in your head that you kind of want to go back there and. We're trying to work with the, the state right now to build, uh, there's three slip docks on the, uh, on this side of the lake right here. Uh, we're trying to get some more lakes because there's a vision, uh, more docks, I'm sorry. Um, so now uh, the slip docks being here? Right? Yeah, they're right along this, uh, see that? Oh, yeah, the, yeah, the, yeah, yeah, railing. where the boats, right, so there's when only come three, in the summer. Yeah, right? there's only three that can be pulled up. I'd like to, we're working with the state now to kind of add some more docks mm -hmm. or I let them, like, it's a private lake, but still, you know, we can't just put them in. Yeah. <laughs> um, and just some docks, the floating docks that will allow maybe six, eight, ten more boats right. to kind of pull up and dock. It's better for the town and business-wise if people can just drive their boat up. Uh, it would be obviously beneficial to us. Uh, but kind of add that another layer to that mystique mm -hmm. of seeing maybe not just a boat or two, but if you're pulling up on a Saturday or a Sunday or during the week, you know, you see the mural and you see the town and, and the lake, and now there's eight or ten boats. Like, you know, that, that Cape Cod feel. Or, you know, oh my God, right. dude, I was just going to you know. say that. So I lived in New England. Yeah. I was just going to say that. Because <laughs> uh, those small towns, so I used to go to Barnstable. Uh, there's a place called Sandy Neck. Um, I, and then there's a place where Edward Gorey lived in these like small, little, beautiful towns. Uh, and those little harbors, Yeah. well, but like Barcelona. Right. But the difference is, 
Barcelona's orientation is a lot different. To have those, because I, I totally know what you're saying. Because if I came in, that would be like the other but, layer, right? Then you're right? Because like, wow. we've, yeah, because yeah. we've got, because I'm already blown away, right? But and that just draws people, mm. and it gives you that like notion of, uh, I don't know. There's just something that it does to us, as, you know, like this little like beautiful town. You got this little harbor here. Yeah. You see the boats and the masts, and it's just like a congregation place, right? Then, you know, because I know. Um, the second time I was here, there were, there was three boats there. Yeah. And it was just cool to see, right. you know what I mean? Like pulled up and your restaurant's here and people are eating. Yeah. It just gives you that vibe. And that's kind of the Findlay Lake brand. Mm -hmm. You're fortunate enough, you can't help geography. Right. Right? <laughs> and you're here yeah. and the town's here. So take advantage of it. Why not? Right. You know, it would be silly not to. Yeah. You know, because you put three slips there and get nine, ten boats, twelve boats, get these masts and you pull down here and you're like, yeah. this is awesome yeah. and it just encourages people and it inspires people you don't right. see this hardly ever yep it's a different scale here so um so that i'm sure that'll happen that would be silly if they were like yeah. no, we only want three boats <laughs> yeah you could do 12 comfortable here right you yeah could, I, I don't you know yeah we would jet them out towards the lake and i mean there's plenty of space wow. there yeah it just gives people when you're when you're in this town and you're, you don't want to you don't want to drive here i mean people will walk to the restaurant right um but you know, you want to go, go off your deck and you want yep. to get in your boat and you want to go to dinner. <laughs> yeah, and, it's you know, an awesome and experience. And if the docks are filled the three, by the three boats, it kind of, well, Yeah, and you, know. you will have business from fall to, to late, right. uh, yeah. fall to, or uh, late spring to fall then. Yeah. Easily. Right, uh, exactly. You know. Yeah, they, uh, the, like, they close the dam um, mid to late April and then they, that'll fill up the lake and then they lower the lake on Columbus Day in October. They do. So, um, just to keep so all the people can keep their docks in the lake so they don't oh, get right, frozen. Right. So it's like, you know, small enough that they can do that. Um, that way people's property doesn't get destroyed in this winter. Right, and uh, so twin docks, basically, you guys, uh, so this is, so here's the town again, mm -hmm. right? Uh, Camp Findlay, yep. saved. Alexander's, which wasn't Alexander's, mm -hmm. but it's their local restaurant, right. saved. Twin docks, saved. Right. That is really special. Right. Who does that? What town does that? Maybe once, but you, this is three times now. And each, like Twin Docks is really nice in there now. Mm -hmm. you know, it's a I wish you could have seen it before. I mean, not that it wasn't nice before, but it was a totally different. It was different, old. Yeah, probably, totally different right? building. Yeah. yeah, and now it looks, it's modernized, it's super clean, and the product selection is awesome. Right. It's, and I could see what you guys are trying to do. You're bringing in these homespun, you know, DIY. There's mm -hmm. a lot of like organic type of companies yeah. in there. And it works for this town. I right? think the town is so, not just so much invested in you know, their own house or their community. They're, they're literally so invested in the name Finley Lake. It's, it's part of them. It's been a part of them and their family for years. So I actually, I moved up here um, in April 2018 behind Twin Docks. Um, and not that we were not invested before, but when you, you know, you work here and you yeah. go home to Erie, how invested, you know, can yeah. you be every night? So it really took off and made me a part of the community and really invested um, when I moved in here because it was more of, you know, not just seeing me at the restaurant, but seeing me at the local other shops or the other restaurants and yeah. or walking down the street. Um, you know, our people in this town really appreciate that because, you know, you're another Finley Laker and that's, you know, that's what they call it, each other. And it's, there's so much pride and so much, you know, you know, care, you know, of revitalizing different buildings or restaurants or businesses um, because I feel like that's, they, they feel like that's a, it's their obligation, but because they want to do that. Yep. And that's, you know, when I moved up here, that's the first thing that I you recognize invested that. in is, you know, I can go on vacation, I can, but it's like, I want, I want to go back, you know, I want to come yeah. back to my home and like the restaurant and, you know, because that's where the family is. And yep. I don't have any family up here, but that's everybody in this community has become that. And I right. think that's how they treat each other. It is. To me, it was like, uh, this is your house. This is your right. home. Yeah. So this is your place and your partner's place. And uh, when they're here, you're ultimately responsible for that experience. Right. The number one experience that they're having is with the people they're with and the food they're right. eating. So you're really providing that for them. And there's nothing more important. You know? No, and there's, there's a type of, you know, it's the satisfaction you get from somebody saying that you cook something, like, really well or they had a great experience because, you know, one of our servers was so personable and the service was great. Like, that's more than a dollar than, you know, Dude, could ever, everybody. ever could, yeah. you know, replace. So, you know, we have that, 
we have that going on in the front, and we have that personal relationship forming, and we have that consistency in the back, in the kitchen, um, and the compliments and the stuff that is put on, you know, Facebook or Google, and that you read, and when you're having those bad days, and somebody hits you with a compliment out of nowhere, you're just like, all right, well, you know, I, I can do right. this, we can do this. Like, yep. it wasn't that bad, it was just one thing, or, yeah. you know, that, that's, that's more than money, you know, whatever it is. It, you know, it so is. And sometimes it's crazy to think that, like, you know, it keeps you humble as well. It, it does, it, You know, right. it, it's crazy to think that what you're, what you're building and what your staff is building is, you know, people like. You know, like I said, yeah. I, I haven't really, this is my first experience in heading a restaurant, and I've worked in them, but that's, like I said, it's a different beast doing what I'm doing now and to, to hear stuff, like, about our staff and our food you know, well, we, always, you. we always sit back sometimes and we're just like, this is kind of crazy we're doing this, you know? It's, <laughs> That's right. It, it's like, you know, surreal, but it keeps you humble and it keeps you motivated, not just myself, but the staff. And it's, you know, you go to bed at night and you're like, all right, well, no matter how bad the day was, it's, you know, there's people that really appreciate what you're doing. As far as your menu goes, do you, because uh, you said you drop items and you add items, are, you're still in flux with all that too, right? You're starting to develop, because it's been three years, right? yeah. so you're starting to develop uh, your staples, like your stir fry, which right. isn't going anywhere, yeah. uh, and then you said you were doing your wraps now, yep. uh, and then the quesadillas, yep. right? Um, we have uh, our, our burgers, um, our top seller, uh, it's a half pound burger, uh, you get cheese, two toppings, and uh, we actually started a wing night, not wing night, a burger night uh, in March on Sunday. So our burgers are normally $12, they're $7 on Sundays wow. from uh, 5 to 8.30. So that was, that's really taken off um, slower at first, but now people even on the off day, uh, on non-Sunday will come in, get a burger, I mean, right. things huge. Um, we do some specialty burgers, we try to rotate that. Um, Weekly, with just like just you know French, like put some French fries and onion rings on there with some barbecue, you know, just one of those. It's like awesome, yeah. yeah. Um, we Get have the a burger called the Overload Burger, where we put mac and cheese and an egg on it. Um, <laughs> and then we have a burger called our Grilled Cheese, which is uh, a burger between two grilled cheese sandwiches. So we kind of have like the obscure, oh like you know, ridiculous. That's awesome. Know, it's almost $20 burger. Yeah. But, I mean, good it's, luck yeah, eating. It's good like luck two eating meals. It. Yeah. Right, yeah. It's yeah. for lunch tomorrow, too. Um, so we go through a lot of burgers um, any season. Um, do you play with the men? I mean, is that you, like, just playing around? Yeah, just, just yeah. like, do some research online or just, like, talking, like, hey, what's, you know, what's obscure? And those are the two burgers that stuck. And how many people have a burger between two grilled cheese sandwiches? I do. Right. <laughs> well, that's right. the thing. Uh, we have a Reuben which we call a Big Bad Wolf. Um, the only reason it's called a Big Bad Wolf is because we had a sandwich when we opened called the Three Little Pigs. Um, we had pepperoni, ham, um, and chorizo sausage on it. Oh, and great. it just didn't sell well. It was my favorite sandwich, Yeah, actually. it sounds awesome. Um, but it kind of, you know, we took that off the menu, and now people are like, why is your Reuben called a Big Bad Wolf? That doesn't make any sense. He ate them. But it was like, uh, we yeah. had a sandwich called the Three Little Pigs, and then we have a steak and cheese, so we had the Finley cheese steak, which is just your diced beef steak. Um, but we also have a cheese steak. We get it, uh, it's actual like real steak filet medallions. That's, so it's, yeah, that's what we eat. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, you know, cooked to your liking. It's not just your typical uh, steak and cheese that most people think, you know. Uh, what kind of a roll? Uh, it's a brioche bun. Uh, that's um, awesome. So we put, you know, some caramelized onions on there. With, you know, your choice of cheese. Mostly recommend provolone. But, yep. Um, yeah, those are kind of like our... Our prior top three or four four items, like I said, we have. Um, what else do we have? We introduced a like Cody from Tampa, so we introduced a Cuban back in May. So nice. We have a Cuban on our menu. Well, that's completely different. Right. Yeah, completely that you different. wouldn't expect. And especially in this area, not many people have Cubans yeah, nor know how to make them. This guy actually is from you know an area that yeah, you know, that's is a standard really rich. Yeah, right. Yeah, you know, you everywhere has a Cuban. Um, so those have been good. Um, I and think then that's uh, about, for the I mean, bar, uh, do you have your happy hours, or how do you... Yeah, we do. Um, we're working on a, a new happy hour menu right now, but we have something every day. It was kind of like, let's just get our feet underneath us first before we start rolling out all these specials and, you know, aren't prepared. So we do, uh, the place before us had like a local night on Thursdays, uh -huh. uh, and we kept that. So we do like a local night every Thursday from 5 to 7, all the drafts are half off. 
Um, well, because this is, you're so accessible. Like, they walk right. around the lake. Yeah. It's really not far. Too, so if they're anywhere on the lake, I mean, generally it's not going to be five miles because it's a five-mile right. uh, circumference. Yeah. So with you guys, uh, you're probably no more than two miles walk away, which is 45 minutes. Right. So you're accessible to the whole lake, to the whole town, uh, and it's this beautiful, it's really welcoming. You can get food, you can sit at this beautiful bar. Right. So, you know, the relationship is different. It's right. not a bar that serves food. Right, and right. it's a restaurant. It's a restaurant or a bar. bar, right. Yeah, yeah we so, do about 65% food and like 35% uh, booze. So it is like, you know, you come to get a meal and then have some beers. So, and they walk in on Thursdays, the locals, and they know they're going to see so-and-so and see all their friends, and it kind of just turned into, you know, uh, you know, it looks like, like a, a, like a to me. It looks yeah. like a, a meeting house almost. Yeah. So the way that this is oriented, this yeah. room, it just looks like that type of place. Right. There's no nothing in the way. You have access. It's open, and then you have this really beautiful porch. Yeah, you, know, you can't go wrong.